This is The Art Zone. You're tuned to The Art Zone, a video document of the arts and artists of Metro Rockford. This is The Art Zone. In this Art Zone, an interview with artist Sherry Rittenhouse. We'll see large-scale mural paintings in Belvedere, plus the bold works of Matt Lamb at the Rockford Art Museum, and video art from Meat Space. Hi, I'm Doc Slavkoski, and this is The Art Zone. We're coming to you from J.R. Cortman Center for Design downtown in the heart of Rockford's cultural district. In this art zone, we'll talk with Rockford artist Sherry Rittenhouse about her successful career as an artist. We'll take you to New American Theater for highlights of a performance put on by the Students of Arts Place, a summer youth program in downtown Rockford. We'll show you some spectacular murals painted on exterior walls of downtown Belvedere buildings. Plus, we'll have video art from Meet Space, hosted by Devin Hankel and Jim Asbury. And just a ram minute, we'll feature the works of internationally known artist Matt Lamb at the Rockford Art Museum. So sit back, relax, and enter the art zone. Now here's an interview with Rockford artist Sherry Rittenhouse, whose solo exhibition entitled Dias Años opened in September 1997 in commemoration of the Cortman Gallery's 10th anniversary. We're in one of the art studios at Rock Valley College, and we're talking with artist Sherry Rittenhouse. Uh, Sherry, first of all, tell us about the show that you have at the Cortman Gallery. Well, the show is called Diez Años, or 10 Years, and it's a 10-year anniversary for the, for the gallery at J.R. Cortman. Um, kind of an interesting idea that, I, that I'm real happy about is it's the 10-year anniversary of the space, and 10 years ago, I couldn't believe it, that 10 years ago, I was the first artist having the show there. So you all asked me to have this show uh, to celebrate the 10-year anniversary, and there's a piece from every year since 1987. So there's uh, where originally it was going to be all new work. We scrapped that idea and went with um, a work from 87, 88, 89, and so on. One year, one piece from every year. Also, has that process changed over the years, this creative process? Do you do it differently now than you did 10, 15 yeah, years ago? I'll tell you what I'm doing now that's different. Um, there's a piece in the show called The Garden and it's got a black and white background. And when I did that piece, I actually made a woodcut and stamped the whole eight foot by six foot, you know, pretty large expanse of the background. I stamped it all out, black and white. It was just a black and white pattern because in that black and white pattern, I saw things. Like, you know, how if you have a modeled atmosphere, you can sort of see, I don't know, people say they look at the clouds and they can make out these silly shapes and so forth. Well. In that pattern, I could see images, or it was a jumping off point for me to find the images. I remember doing that. I don't need that at all anymore. If you're not totally satisfied with a piece of work, do you show it? No. Uh-uh. And do you have tons of this stuff around? No, actually, I, I'm trying to think. In a painting, like in a, the way that I work on my paintings, layers are really important to me. So um, if if I have a painting going that's not working, I'll work on it until it's repaired. And you know, underneath a lot of my paintings, there's completely other paintings that are under there that didn't work out. And I don't mean I go in with white paint and re-gesso over the, the painting and start over. I incorporate that. To me, there, that's like there's a little life underneath that painting that some, some part of it might come out and really look good. but. Generally speaking, like on a canvas, you can always just keep going. Um, you know, I ruin a lot of work, but what I'm saying is, that, you know, you let it dry and sort of start working over it and dealing with the images that you have there. I remember uh, Peter Baldaya from the Rockford Art Museum came over to see a painting, and uh, he said, that painting's finished, I want to take it. You know, it was for a show, and I didn't feel like it was finished, and... We kind of had a little argument, a little, little bit. Of, I said, well, I'm going to do something else to it. And he, he said, you know, he felt it was done. And after, I let it sit till the next day, and I went down, and I thought, I'm, you know, it was done. It was done. In fact, I think that was a red piece, the piece called Vita Pelagroso that's in the show, the big red piece. And 
I love that paint. I actually, I mean, I really love that painting now and I can't imagine what I would have done to it to sort of, I have done that a lot of times I go too far and you cannot get that back. So that's just. What's the feeling when you finally finish a piece? Oh yeah, that's great. That's, that's really fun. You know, that's why I do it. I mean, the feeling of, of, uh, looking at your own work and liking it, you know, it's someone, you know, people say, who's your favorite artist? And I, I sometimes, I mean, it doesn't have to be, I'm not saying that I'm the greatest thing in the world. I'm saying, I just like looking at my own work and I love it when I've just finished work and going in and when it's good, <laughs> which isn't every day, you know, going in and go, yeah, that looks, that looks, that looks good. That's a real, that's like one of my probably most satisfying, satisfying feelings of accomplishment. I was here for the first one and I'm here for the 10th one. And Sherry was my art teacher at Rock Valley and we went to Belize together. So I have a very close uh, feeling about her work and I understand it. And I think this is wonderful and I congratulate you. Could you give us a reaction to Sherry's work, please? Well, we have seen Sherry's work for many years and uh, She's got some good artwork. And we even have some at Maruba in, in Belize at our resort. That's great. So what do you think of Sherry's work? I think she, I think her work is excellent. And it looks like every year she's getting up and up. Um, your career, the way I, I view it, has kind of has had three phases, or you're, and you're currently in two of them. But as an, as an artist, first of all, a student, and then as a associate professor of art here at Rock Valley College, and then as an artist standing alone, aside from being a student and a teacher. So there's those, those kind of three aspects. How are they different? Wow, that's a, that's a good question. Um, totally, uh, I would say they're, they're inter, interlocking and apart from one another at the same time. There's a really different feel from being a student than to being, you know, uh, when you're done with school and you're working. I mean, for one thing, you work in a studio where you may not see anybody. You might not have any kind of repertoire with your work. You may not have somebody else to discuss it with you, critique it for you. So you have a very solitary existence. I mean, um, in my studio life, it's, it's rather solitary. And for that reason, I bring work in here to the college and I work around my students when when we have a chance it's not as often as you know it might be but it's pretty pretty cool to be able to work and have them working alongside of me and communicating that way and in a way I kind of go back to that student past in my <laughs> mind then you know that that it's this place where you hang out and you work and you discuss your work so but I think by the time I got into graduate school I really felt you know, independent of that whole scene. And, um, and then teaching is a totally, you know, it's a different kind of thing, except that's what that a lot of people say, well, if you teach, you're going to quit, quit making art and you're going to, it'll just kill all your creativity. But I really disagree with that. I mean, I didn't go to school to become a teacher and I didn't plan on teaching as my lifelong work. And I find it really inspires me. I mean, sure, you have these days that it doesn't work out, but I find it really inspires me. And there's always new ideas coming to light. Students will inspire you. Research you do will inspire you. So I feel kind of funny talking about it because I feel uh, illiterate to a certain um, extent because sometimes I, I discuss it with somebody and it comes out and it sounds right to me, but it's not something I really think about where do the images come from because it's, I, exp I try to explain it this way to my students sometimes because when I tell them anyone can learn to draw, anybody can learn to paint, you can learn to be, some people have more skill at it, but you can learn more and more about it. Um, and anybody can learn a technique to whatever ability they want to. The, the essence of being, you know, successful as an artist is, is the idea, what ideas that you come up with and how are they unique and how are they different and what do you offer to the world? Well, let's go back to that, though, way back, like into the 70s. Where, what inspired you to be an artist? I know that sounds like sort of a corny question, but I just want to know a little bit how that comes about. Um, gosh, I mean, I think about the 70s. I was like, 
I was in high school, so or grade school and high school, so. Um, but you were doing work then. Yes, I was. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was. In fact, um, I was showing, and you know, I thought I was. It's funny. I give this. I have a lecture. I have an art appreciation course that I teach, and I talk a little bit about. Um, the encouragement you can give children and how that develops them and so forth and how just encouraging creativity can make them, you know, make them succeed as artists or make them succeed creatively and then maybe they are never going to become an artist but they'll, I don't know, follow kind of a creative lifestyle and how you can also kill creativity in children. You can just completely murder, murder it. and. Um, Part of that I remember as a kid, I remember going to classes with my mother and being like the child in an adult class. And I mean, I had no idea that the, the college students who were, you know, fawning over my work and telling me it was great were just doing that because I was a novelty. I was a child in their class, you know, and it was something to, to do as a break. Um, in grade school, I had no encouragement. And I probably would have quit at that point, but I remember thinking, well, I'm in college, so this teacher doesn't know how talented I really am. So I remember thinking that. I actually remember. And I think I see, I guess most specifically speaking, my work is a diary. And to me, that's real exciting to look there and see what I'm going through because we don't always admit to ourselves what we're doing in our work. Okay, how internal or external is this diary as far as the influences? Like, are the, like for instance, I know you travel a lot. Um, you spend a good deal of time in Belize and Central America and also do tours of Mayan ruins and things like that. Are there external, like historic influences in your imagery or does, would you say it's more coming from the inside? No, definitely both, definitely both. Like it's, um, you know how in your diary you would write something like if you meet somebody and they affect you, you that would be what you would write for that day okay or if you see something and it impresses you that would be what you wrote for that day so um art, i mean i have a huge respect for the the history of art and and i think that's that's like i always like to liken it to this giant rolodex you have in your head of of imagery and i don't appropriate imagery very directly um like right now one of the weird things I have that, ins that is inspirational to me is Matt Vincent gave me a grade school biology book that has dissection of frog overlays in it. And I just like that, the way that the frog was drawn and I started like drawing frogs. And I mean, it's like so removed from that. Nobody would look at one of my paintings and say, oh, that's a dissection of a frog from an elementary school text. Well, I've known Sherry for a long time. Um... I guess the way I respond to her work is I respond to the narrative aspect of it. Uh, it's something that we kind of share. Um, when you look at her symbolism, um, you're never really sure exactly what it is. You know that you're reading part of your own feelings into it, and it carries that kind of an idea along. What do you think about her work? Uh, her work to me as a non-artist is, is different. It's uh, something that I'm learning to understand, I think. Uh, over the course of time, I will come to understand more about her and see more of her inner art because it is an expression of her and as she sees herself or sees life in, in general. Uh, I told Sherry, uh, it seems like I could take a step back and uh, jump right into the painting. I think that's a quality I really like because it's uh, just ethereal, you know. This is the art town. 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 What does Sherry Rittenhouse see in the future for Sherry Rittenhouse? I see having more of a, you know, a larger forum for the work and um, I think I'm being more honest with it. I think I've gotten really more down to the essence of what I'm into, not caring, you know. I mean, I'm going to be successful regardless of whether uh, 
you know, I, I have to do the, I have to make the work for myself and then the success will come from that. And I think, you know, there's been times where I've looked at the work and for whatever reason you change certain things or you clean it up or you cover it up or I don't know, I don't know quite how to explain that, but um, I think now I've been much more honest to myself. Uh, I've been writing more and the writing fuels the work. And so I just see um, everything going in a more, probably in a more uh, complete direction, like my whole life, everything I'm doing, I'm seeing now feeding back into the artwork. This is Gail D'Artes and I'm an actor, I'm a teacher, I'm a director, I'm an administrator, I'm a mother. And all of me watches Art Zone, and so are you. Every summer, the Arts Place program offers high school students basic job skills while working on an artistic endeavor. A major production in 1997 was Clicks, a musical comedy performed at the New American Theater. This play was written, directed, and choreographed by the Rockford students you see here. Clicks was so well received by the community that every performance was sold out and encore performances were requested. Day one, my mission begins. I'm going to click Borough High to observe and interact with human life forms. You smell pee, you dirty. <laughs> <laughs> These humans are very hard to understand. Hi, gangbangers. Here's my money. Are you going to take it now? <laughs> are you being smart? Smart. <laughs> I think I'm smart, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're probably just going to take your money. They did. Who oh, did? Well, you can't trust us, crackhead burnout. If we're not gonna take your money, we go your friends. I'm the basketball man. He's the basketball man. I'm the basketball man. He's the basketball man. In the summer of 1997, the city of Belvedere hosted a large-scale mural painting competition. The Art Zone was there to capture these spectacular works of art. This is Jay, day number three, after a very restless sleep. Uh, weather cleared out yesterday and the weather head or the headlines on the front of the local paper said wall dogs laugh off bad weather. Uh, we showed the magic, we created a little uh, heat on the ground and that dissipated the clouds. We're about 90% done on the big wall here. Um, project leader Bill Hughes down there working away with Bill Masters from Scranton, Pennsylvania. 
We've got a lot of people still clearing out of town here, but from this from this vantage point anyways, I'd say there's still a lot of people here. Um, a lot of members of the community that are out there walking around and enjoying these things. We just keep getting compliment after compliment uh, for what we're doing. The whole town feels entirely different about itself. When they found out that 400 artists that came to town um, said, wow, this is a really cool town. Uh, it, it just is something so special that people are going to keep this memory in their hearts forever and ever. And that's what makes this whole thing a success, is that we created memories uh, besides creating art. Now here's Devin Hankel and Jim Asbury of Meat Space to introduce this Art Zone segment devoted to video art. Welcome to Meat Space. I'm Devin. I'm Jim. And he's cranky. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> what are you reading, man? Uh, I'm reading uh, Steve Allen's newest autobiography. Yeah, what's it say? Well, did you know that he created the concept of Tai Chi and he started the, the Russian Revolution? He invented John Per Pants. He was a central figure in the Surrealist movement and he invented video art. What are John Per Pants? Those big riding pants that the directors in the 20s used to wear, big mm -hmm. fat pants, F-A-T, not, anyway. Uh, what video so, are we watching? What video? That's a good question. Uh, tonight we'll be seeing Dust Test. It's by Bill Eng, John Diles, and Joe Hamill. So let's take a look at it. That was better. Didn't suck as much as the first one. We're watching. good piece um kind of short and sweet i know some of the pieces we've shown in the past have been a little conceptual a little a little heavy in weight this was <laughs> light short and sweet and uh very entertaining i thought it was a very imaginative use of the nonlinear that is computer controlled editing system uh i like the way that it was a uh, time lapse effect with the other students and uh the way they kicked the soundtrack up real loud for effect was really really nice so um, me too. I think I think you, you everything I say pretty much goes for him. You know, double it at six. Well, that's it for this month. We'll see you next month back here on Meat Space. Yeah, Meat Space. Uh, once again, I'm Jim. And I'm Devin. Still. Uh, see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
For years, artists have come to Niagara Falls for inspiration. When I want inspiration, I watch the Art Zone. <laughs> art Zone takes you to the Rockford Art Museum for just a ram minute to show the dynamic works of self-taught artist Matt Lamb. This is Matt Lamb. I'm at the Rockford Art Museum at my exhibition of the Obsessive Spirit. I'm really proud to be here. I have had my work shown throughout the world. And when I walk through the door of any of my exhibitions, I never know what to expect as my mode of operandum is not to pick out the paintings that are to be in the exhibition or to curate them, but to leave it up to the local institutions and the curators and I have to say, without doubt, this is the best curated, hung, lit, and space show that I've ever had. And I congratulate all the folks that were involved in putting this together. It really is a demonstration of what my art is about, which is about the spirit, tolerance, hope, understanding, and love. I want to thank everyone in the Rockford area for having me. I'm from Chicago, but also Ireland, Florida, and Wisconsin, but I feel like I'm really part of this whole community. Thanks again. Great to be here. Thanks for watching The Art Zone. Uh, stay tuned for the closing credits. We're going to take you to the 1997 Greenwich Village Art Fair, which found a new home this year in Davis Park. Uh, if you have any questions or comments about The Art Zone, we'd love to hear from you. Give us a call at 968-0123 or stop in and see us at 107 North Main, downtown Rockford. Also, past episodes of The Art Zones are available for checkout at the downtown Rockford Public Library. Once again, thanks for watching The Art Zone. <laughs> this is the art zone. This is the art zone. This is Nancy Froelich speaking for The Art Zone. The Art Zone is funded by J.R. Portman Center for Design and Cafe Esperanto, downtown Rockford. This is The Art Zone. 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 This is the art zone.